Hello friends and welcome to a Man and John Future Feature Special and today I'd like to highlight a few fixes and features that our developer friend Man and John has recently submitted ready to be incorporated in a future version of OpenTunes and he's been working furiously recently adding fixes and features that although aren't huge features will make your life with OpenTunes much easier but on behalf of everyone who uses OpenTunes I'd like once again to thank him for all the work he's doing and you can see all the fixes that have been coded and waiting to be added to the official release on the pull request page that you can see on screen. So do take a look at that page to see what else might be coming up soon. And I've added a link to this page in the description below. But some of these changes have already been merged into the latest version of OTX and where they have, I'll show them here. So the first change can be seen in the starting pop-up. And you can see in the recent scenes list on the right hand side that it lists the scene and the project name in brackets here and when you load it it shows both in the programs header at the top of the window and the next thing you'll notice if you've used OpenTunes before is that if the scene didn't belong to the project listed in this drop down it would ask if you wanted to import it which was just confusing to most of us but now it simply loads the scene and if you want the import feature you have to tick the box before you click on the scene so let's just load this scene so you'll notice the scene and project name both listed on the top. So the next difference you'll notice is you'll see that the menu has been reorganised. So the file menu is much shorter, with items either moving to other menus or moving into sub-menus. And there's quite a few small changes, but to highlight a few, you'll notice there's a new play menu, listing all of the play controls. There's a new render menu, listing all of the preview and render options, and these were previously in the file menu. The Windows menu has a few new options, including the starting pop-up at the bottom here, and a couple of other options. And the Help menu finally has a link to the online help page, so this should help all of us. And you can read more about the menu changes in the pull request that I've linked in the description below. And I'll link to all of today's stories in the description, so you can take a read and find out exactly what's changed. So the next big change is a feature that's been asked about so many times by everyone I've spoken to that wants to move or animate the camera. And you can currently animate the camera, but the issue is that when you do, the animation keys aren't visible on the X sheet. So if you want to move them, delete them or change the interpolation, you have to use the function editor. So it's common to create a separate column to add the camera movements to, and then insert this to the camera on the stage schematic. Well this is all about to change when this pull request is actioned and this adds the camera column back into the X sheet so that when you animate it you can see and edit the keys directly from the X sheet and there's more details to this on the PR page so take a read of it for full details so the next change affects drawing substitution and as you may know you can swap drawings in the level on a frame by using the Q and W keys but this doesn't currently work on all selected frames so when this fixes merge onto the main line, you'll be able to select a range of frames and press the Q or W keys to change the drawing shown on the whole selection. Let me show you what I mean. So I've just had a couple of drawings on these frames. So you can select one drawing on a single frame and press the W key to change from drawing number 3 to number 4, 5, 6. And then the Q key changes to earlier drawings. So I've pressed Q. It goes down to 5, 4 and then 3. And with the new change you can select and highlight on a selection of frames and it will alter all of those by moving them all up by one drawing with the W key or moving them down with the Q key. So this next addition adds a long overdue context menu to the note level to access many of the common features of a note level which makes the note level a little bit more usable. Plus there's a small fix to a crash when replacing a level. The next two changes affect the way the camera flipping works. In case you didn't know, you can flip the camera either horizontally or vertically to help you check that your drawing is well balanced. But this currently flips the camera around the camera center, which is fine most of the time, but if you've zoomed in, the area of the screen that you're looking at will flip to the opposite side of the drawing area, and you have to pan to that opposite area to see it. This change means that the view flips about the current view, so even if you're zoomed in, you can flip the part of the screen that you zoomed in on. And the next change fixes an issue with the touch control while flipping, so that now works. But let me just show you the camera flipping. 
So the first thing I'll do is to add a keyboard shortcut to flip the camera both horizontally and vertically. So we'll choose configure shortcuts from the file menu. In the search area, I'll type horizontal. And there's the option. So select it, click into the blue area, and I'll type the letter H. And it's already assigned to change the brush size, but that's fine. So I'll change that to flip the viewer and press yes. And then we'll type in vertically. And again, select the option, click in the blue area, and I'll type V to flip vertically. And again, that's already assigned to the skeleton tool. And for me, it's fine to change that. So I'll click yes and close that. So if I draw in the new frame and press H to flip horizontally, you see the face go to the opposite side of the screen and then flip it vertically and it goes to the top and the bottom. But if I zoom in and press H to flip horizontally, you can see the zoomed in portion of the screen flip on screen rather than it moving out of view. And again, flipping vertically does the same thing. But again, another small but useful change. So this next PR fix changes the way you can group nodes on the stage schematic, something you might not even know you can do. So there's currently a restriction to allow you to only group nodes that all connect to the same parent node. So let me show you. So if I add some new levels in different columns, and then bring up the schematic view, So if using cutout animation, or if you use the animation tool to animate some of the columns, you might pair in the column nodes together. So moving column 1 for instance will automatically move column 3 and column 2. And the stage schematic can get quite complicated and quite full of your nodes, so sometimes it's easier to group them together. And you do this by clicking and dragging around some of the nodes, and then right click and choose group, and it collapses them down into a single group. You can right click on the group and choose open group and then you can see that all three nodes can be moved together as one single node and visually it helps group them together and you can double click into the title here and name them appropriately and then you've got the option to close the editor and open the group and also to ungroup them to take them out of the boxed area. And in the current 1.3 version of OpenTunes, you could group these two together, or you could group these three together, but you couldn't group columns 2, 3 and 4 together into a single group because we've got two different parents, that's column 1 and the table. But in the current version of OTX, and when this fix is merged into the main line, you'll be able to group these three nodes together. So again, you drag a box around all three to highlight them, you right click and choose Group. And if we open that group up, you can see they're still connected to different parents, but they can be moved as a single group. And this makes creating groups much more flexible. And I can't wait for this to be available for you to use. Finally, there's this fix for vector levels. And this fix is an issue I've had a couple of times. And after chatting with Manong John about this and sending him my project files, along with others doing the same, he's been able to find and fix the problem. And it's basically an issue where vector data was incorrectly saved and it caused a crash when it was reloaded so the level became unusable and this fix prevents the crash which is a great first step and hopefully at some point someone will figure out why the bad data is created in the first place but this at least means you can keep working and there's another fix to make vector levels more robust so if you have issues with vector levels or any other part of open tunes it just goes to show that if you file a report on the issues page, especially if you've got repeatable steps or a project file you can share, then there's more chance of it getting fixed and improving the product for everyone. So that's a quick look at some of the features and fixes coming soon, thanks to Manong John. And of course there's other developers working on OpenTunes, and all their work is greatly appreciated by all of us. So that's it today for the news, and now we're back soon with more news, tutorials and animations. So why not subscribe to not miss them? And I'll see you soon. And that's a guarantee.